So we got quite a lot of folders and files here. Now, a lot of the files you see here are only there for configuration and a lot of the folders here also don't need to be touched by you. But let me explain what each folder and file does. Let's go from top to bottom. The idea folder here holds some configuration for Android Studio. It doesn't really matter for us here because we're not working with Android Studio and you don't need to change anything in here. VS Code is a folder you might not have. I have it here because I added some extra configuration for this project. I set the zoom level so that you can see my code um, and anything you do configure for your VS Code, your Visual Studio Code uh, project here would end up in such a config file. And you don't need that if you don't have any special development options here. The Android folder is super important. It holds a complete Android project as you could also create it without Flutter. This is in the end the project which the Flutter SDK will use to kind of merge with your Flutter code, you could say. So when your Flutter code gets compiled to native code, it will basically get injected into this Android project, you could say. And that is the Android project which later will be built into a real Android app or later actually is the wrong word, which already got built into this Android app we're seeing here. So this is in the end a normal Android project with your compiled Flutter code. And you don't need to change anything in here or very rarely, and I will mention when you do need to change anything here. For the most part, for the most time, this is a passive folder which will be used by Flutter and therefore it's super important, but not a folder you work on. The build folder is also very important. In the end, this holds the output of your Flutter application. In this case here also some Android or Java files. And this folder is generated and managed by the Flutter SDK. You shouldn't change anything in there that will all be done automatically by the Flutter SDK when you are developing or when you are building your app for deployment, which we will do at the end of the course. And therefore this is also a passive folder. So thus far, no folder in which we would work. It's the same for the iOS folder. We had the Android folder with a full Android project, which is important for building an Android project, both for development and for production. And the iOS folder is simply the same for, well, iOS projects. And this holds a normal Xcode project. Xcode is the development environment of macOS for iOS apps. And just as with the Android folder, this is a folder where you really won't work in too much. There are some occasions where we will do some work in here, but I will mention when this is the case, for the most part, this is a passive folder which gets kind of merged with your Flutter code in the end and which will all be managed by the Flutter SDK to get iOS applications, both for development and testing, as well as for the real application in the end which you deploy. The lib folder is now the important folder for us. Lib stands for library, and that is the folder where we will do 99% of our work. It is the folder where we will add all our Dart files, Dart is the programming language Flutter uses, to write the code for our Flutter application. So this is the folder where we will add files and where we will write code in. This is a super important folder for us. The test folder is a folder which won't be too important for us here. It allows us to write tests for our application, automated tests. So basically code that runs our code and tests it for certain things. Certainly important once you're a bit of a more advanced Dart and Flutter developer, but not important for us right now. And therefore we can safely ignore this. Git ignore is a folder that helps you when you're using Git, which is a source code management tool. It allows you to create snapshots of your code, save them, and you can go back to them at a later point of time if you messed up something or if you wanna uh, change something. It is uh, not a tool you have to use, but often during development, Git can be really useful. And after this lecture, you find uh, a short text lecture on Git. Using it is totally optional, but if you wanna use it, if that sounds interesting to you, that lecture will help you get started with it, and then you can use it if you want to use it. The metadata file is not really a file we will work in. It will be managed automatically by, by Flutter. And in the end, the Flutter tool simply saves some information in here, uh, which it needs to, uh, well, build our application correctly and so on.
The same is true for the .packages file. It's not a file I will do any work in. This is generated automatically by the Flutter SDK. And in the end, this also just manages some internal dependencies, some, some packages uh, this project needs, and it is fully managed automatically. You should not delete it, but you also shouldn't work in it. This file here, this .iml file, which has your project name as a name, uh, is also a file where we will not work in. It's also managed automatically by the Flutter SDK to, again, manage some internal dependencies and some uh, settings for this project, you could say. And it's not a file which we will change. Now, the popspec.log file is also not a file we'll work in, and it becomes clearer once we understand the popspec.yaml file, which is a file in which we will work. This is a file that allows you to mostly manage the dependencies of your project. Now, what does this mean? This means that here you can configure which other third-party packages your project might be using. You can also configure some other things in here, like for example, um, fonts you want to use or images you want to use in your application. And we'll use all these features. We'll work with third-party packages and we'll use fonts and images. And therefore, I will show you how to work with this file and how to change it to include new fonts or new images. I will show you all of that step by step. Basically, what you have here is code written in YAML, which is a certain format for structuring text files where you use indentation to express how uh, code works together. And here, for example, uh, we're right now specifying with which Dart version this works, uh, which version our application should have, um, also which other third-party packages we might be using, like here, the Cupertino icons, which allows us to use certain iOS uh, styled icons in the application and we'll add other third-party packages throughout this course here. So this is basically a config file that allows us to configure how our application works or which external dependencies it has. For the moment, we don't need to change anything here. The popspec.log file in the end is a file that is generated automatically based on your .yaml file here. And this simply um, holds more details than about all the dependencies you have. And it is required by Flutter, but it's not a file you will work in. In the end, as I said, it will be generated automatically. We will only work in the YAML file. Well, and the readme file is an automatically generated readme file, which, well, we can ignore. It holds some information about our project. And you could change this here if you were sharing your project with other developers and you want to give them some information. So that was a thorough walkthrough for all the folders and files. The core takeaway is that we will work in the lib folder and sometimes with that popspec.yaml file. And we can basically ignore all other files and folders.